Welcome to NetTuts. In today's video quick tip, we will be discussing PHP error handling, but more specifically, how to email yourself errors when they occur, whether it's in a live site or in production, whatever. Okay, so the way we can uh, log errors is to use the error underscore log function. So you can see here, sends an error message to the web server's error log. Okay, and it accepts a handful of parameters, but the one we're most interested in is the second parameter. And this is the message type, meaning where should the error go? So by default, you can set to zero, and that means it's just sent to PHP's uh, logger. But if we set it to one, we can send an email. Okay, let's try that out. So let's go into Coda today, and I have a blank page. And the first thing I want to do is set error handler. And what we do with this is this allows us to specify a custom function that should be used to handle all of our errors. So we'll call it NetTuts error handler, just for the demo. So what this means is whenever an error is encountered, encountered, this function will be run instead of what it does by default. So we can say function nettuts error handler. And here let's just echo, whoops, just to see if it's working. All right, so to test this out, I'm just going to echo a variable that doesn't exist. Okay, and that should be fine. So let's go into Chrome and I'm gonna refresh the page and you're gonna see undefined variable, but that's still the default error handling. And how come is that? And that's because we're echoing, we're echoing this out. So we're running into an error before we ever get to our custom error message. So why don't we just grab that and bring it down to the very bottom like so. And now if we refresh it, you're gonna see that ours takes effect and it uses our custom error handler. Cool. All right, so now we can do a handful of things here. When we call set error handler, this function is going to receive a handful of parameters. So let's search for PHP set error handler. And you'll see here is all the parameters that accepts. The first one is going to be uh, the number, the level of the error. The second one is going to be the error message itself. Okay, and the third one is going to be the file name it occurred in. The fourth is the line number, and the fifth one is going to be uh, just a list of all the existing variables at the time of the error, and that can be very helpful. So let's try this out. Let's add this in, and it's going to accept the number, and then the message itself, the file it occurred in, the line number, and all of the existing variables that are on the page or existing in the page. And now we can just build up our message. So we'll say email equals and we'll say an error and I'll put the number in parentheses occurred on line and we'll put this within strong text on line line and in the file and we'll paste that in and let's go ahead and make that bold as well okay next uh, let's just put the message within a new paragraph tag And that should be fine. And then if you want, you can also append all of the variables. And this is a lot of data, but I think you might find it'll be really helpful. So we'll append, uh, we'll do a pre-tag, and we're going to print R, all of those variables, because it's a huge array containing your super globals, all of your uh, set variables, etc. And then we'll close that out. However, right now, with this as it is, it's going to print all of those variables on the page. So if you want it returned and stored into a variable, you can pass an optional second, second parameter of one. And that means, no, we're going to store the output into a string, okay, rather than just printing it out. Okay, and that should be fine. Now we're using HTML here, so in order to send an email, what we can do is at the bottom we can call error log, and we're going to log the email. So we're going to log the message. You could change this to message if you wanted. And then we're going to do what's the second parameter? Remember, zero will log it to PHP's logger, one will email it. And then the third parameter is who are we emailing this to? Let's just send it to uh, myself, jeffrey at envato.com. And then the fourth parameter, and this is optional, and it's only allowed if this parameter is set to one, and it's headers. So if you want to set headers, it's the same as when you do a PHP's uh, mail function and things like that. So I could say headers, and this is where you can add anything special. So here we're going to set a content type is the text HTML, and carset ISO 8859-1, you might want to save this to a text snippet or something. 
Okay, and all we're doing here is we're setting the header to allow HTML. That way, these will actually be rendered as HTML rather as just text. Okay, and now we have our error log. So we're sending that, but we also want to make sure we pass the headers over as a parameter as well. So now, whenever we run into an error, this specifies that this function is going to handle the error. Okay, and then we build up a string and we say an error, uh, the number occurred on line number and then the line number and in the file and that'll be the file name where the error occurred and then we paste in the message itself and then finally we just print out all of the variables that existed on the page finally we call error log and this is the message that we're going to send to the logger we pass one to specify that it's going to be emailed this is who it's going to be emailed to and the fourth parameter which is optional specifies any headers so if you just want to email yourself there was an error you don't even need to specify this. Only do this if you have HTML in your string. And that's it. So let's test this out. I'm going to go back to my page, refresh it. And now if I move over to Gmail, you'll see if I open up the email, we get PHP error log message. And then it says an error occurred on line. And I have two lines there, but on line 15 and in the file, and then our file name. And then this is the message itself, undefined variable sum var that does not exist. And then this is really helpful, it just prints out everything that's going on. So it has your post array, your get, and that way you can see if there's anything fishy going on. And then it'll also log at the bottom, usually right around here, any variables that you've set. So if you set, uh, you know, dollar sign hello equals world, it'll come up here as well. So you can see anything that you need to come across. And that's really the extent of it. So if you have a live site, an error occurs, you can use a function like this to email you the error so that you're the first one to find out. Now the last thing you should check out would be if you're debugging, you probably don't want to send yourself all of these error messages. So you could either only activate this once you've deployed the site or set a debug in something like debug you know, equals true. And then you could say if I don't know if uh, your website has local host in it, then you know you're on, you know, you're debugging. And in that case, debug would be false. So you can use functions like uh, you could do preg match if you wanted to do a regular expression, something like this. And you're going to compare that to, uh, you know, something like that. Or you could do the string i string, string and string function, which specifies whether a string occurs in another string. So you can do either of those. Just find some way to specify that uh, maybe if you're in debug mode or you're on your local host, you don't want to send yourself all of these emails, only when deployed. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. And for more tips and tutorials, always visit NetTuts. Bye.